Hello, my name is Rosa Maria Kostic Cisneros and I am collaborating with the Independent Theatre Hungary. I'm here today with Richard O'Neill and Tamás Segedi. Um, we're all in different locations, but because of the beauty of technology, we're able to connect and sit here today to talk about European family. Hello both, I hope you're well. Welcome to, to the conversation. Thank you. Yes, if you could both start um, by introducing yourselves, your practice, uh, where you are, I think that'd be helpful as well. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Richard O'Neill. I'm from a, a nomadic Romani family in the north of England. That's where I'm speaking to you from now. And I'm a writer. I write all kinds of things. I write everything from children's books to plays. But I, I particularly love plays. Um, it, it's such a wonderful thrill to sit down there and watch your words being spoken by somebody else. And whether that's in English or a different language, it, it's a particular thrill to see these ideas come to life. Yes, thank you. And Thomas? Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Thomas Sagadi from Hungary. I live in Budapest. I work as an actor and a director in theaters, and I, I work as a teacher in a primary school. I teach in uh, Romani language, and I work as a, as a drama teacher. And in the last uh, few months, I started to work as a writer too. I, I started to write uh, some plays for children, specifically for children. Uh, and in the future, I would like to write more plays uh, just for children, uh, for every, every person. So here we are with two writers. <laughs> it's yes. lovely. Yes, it's lovely. And so speaking of writing, can um, you, we're here talking about European family. Can you tell me a little bit about the work and your role within that work? If you were an actor or a writer and, and yeah, a little bit more about that. Whoever wants to go first. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. It, it was interesting for me, European family, because we were actually in lockdown. So we were, you know, we, we, we couldn't do anything else apart from do this, what we're doing now, which is online. And just as a storyteller and a writer, I'd naturally been collecting stories. And there were so many beautiful stories that came out of the lockdown, particularly in England with people who, because I work with a lot of Roma people who are from Eastern Europe who live, currently live in England. And a lot of them were unable to move of course because of the lockdown some of them needed to get back home uh, and some of them need to get back to england fairly quickly and there were so many stories around that about you know how to get from one place to the other and then when you're a fairly close family as part of a close community that feeling of being split up of being disconnected and talking with the independent theater and they were they were talking about wanting to do a play and I ended up doing some acting in that play, which is not my, my first choice, really. Um, but I enjoyed it, and I, I think I was okay um, in it. I'll, I'll let other people uh, judge that. But it, but it was such a lovely experience because I had all of these stories and I came up with all of these ideas. And then talking to the, the actors, the cast, if you will, then we were able to work ground and they were able to do some of the, the writing themselves for the things they wanted to say. So it's very much um, a collective piece, even though I'd, I'd, I'd had most of the ideas. Um, so that was really interesting to me because it was like a family. And even though we were connecting on the internet, and it, we became kind of like a family. And we, we had all of these, we had some rehearsals, we had some recordings. Um, and we, yeah, we actually went into those roles and I, and I did feel like I was uh, Thomas's dad for quite a while, um, which, was, which was quite good. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed it too, because uh, uh, th that was my first time when I uh, play uh, in, a, in a movie or in a theater. It, it, it was between 
this uh, uh, two two parts of this uh, artistic way. And th this was the first time what what when I when I work as an actor in English. So it was uh, it was a good good experience to me how to play it, how to do it uh, in another language, not my uh, native language. So it was it was a uh, um, good, good experience, and and that that was the s second nice uh, thing in this way. Uh, as as Richard said, we we were uh, all around the world. And some someone was uh, in Italy. Someone was in Spain. Richard was in Britain. I was in Hungary, and my other co colleague uh, Lucy was in Hungary too. But we are not not in the uh, we we are in, in in personality contact. So it was it was an, another uh, specialty things in this. Uh, uh, in this movie, in this uh, uh, way, and th that was a nice so when we when we started to work, uh, started to uh, write our stories, which which will be in the in the play, and how we are thinking on the log lockdown, impersonality or. Uh, from from the other people, the stories uh, from from the news, which uh, which will be in the story, and and the, and the third thing that was so interesting because uh, we we were not just actors and writers maybe in the story we we were the the cameraman <laughs> we were the lighter the, the lighting man. We were the we, we, we make our back, back, background. Yes, and uh, everything things and happen, people. and <laughs> yes, yeah, and yeah. the show must go on. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I and I really enjoyed it because uh, when I make theater, I I love to make the furniture, the the the, 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 the props in the theater. Mm. If I if I directing theater. Performance. I like. I, I love to make the props too. So uh, if I if I play in a show, I I build the the, 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 the theater before we start. And at the moment before start, I take down the theater and start the show as an actor too. <laughs> sure. And so it sounds like uh, Tomas, you've said that there are lots of different people from a number of places. And Richard, you said that there were many stories. Well, all of you brought stories with you. Can you tell me a little bit, Richard, about those stories? I don't know, Thomas, if you want to get your earpiece so we can hear you a little better. I know, it, I think it fell off, yeah. Um, yes. Richard, if you can tell us a little bit about some of the stories. Yeah, I, th I think um, it was really interesting what Thomas said there, and it was just adding on to what I was saying. We, we you know, we, we we really had an ownership of what we were doing, mm. and even though we had people, you know, other people from the theatre who were at the independent theatre watching us and, and and asking us to move things around, and and again, you know, I'm I'm used to live performance as as a performer, um, and you just keep going, um, and once you've done it, you've done it. You know, you think I can do better next time, but when you're doing that, you know, it's very easy for somebody who's watching you, our director here, to say, let's do that again. You know, let's do that again. So there's quite a few things that we did it again and again, and I just like I'm not used to this, um, but. What also was important for me was the, it was very organic in many ways because we did become like a family and we are different, Tamas and I are different generations. Mm. And there was, for me, there was that nice intergenerational mm. because I think sometimes in theater, sometimes, you know, TV or, or film, then we very much separate the generations. Mm. You know, this is an older person, this is a younger person. And we, it was actually very inclusive, I found. And, and that was important to me because the stories that we had running through the European family were things that were happening to people outside in the real world. People were dying and people could not go to their funeral. And, you know, that's hard for anybody. But for people in the Romani community, mm -hmm. it's doubly hard because there's, there's, a, there's like an obligation 
mm. to go to you know if you if that person is a respected person if you're connected in any way there's an obligation mm. um you know even extended family or just somebody mm. fairly well known so there was that was in the play about this fact that you know somebody had died but the the rituals that we usually have we couldn't do you know there's a lot of rituals within the romani communities that we follow and i realized that that was happening to people it, they weren't able to do it so the grief that they were having was becoming what we might call complicated grief mm. um so we were and, and then there's this difference between the generations mm. there are differences obviously and there are similarities too but we were playing around with all of those things yes and it seems like you know uh, this idea of a european family is quite beautiful particularly because you know politically there's so many kind of complications around europe you know brexit all of that but there's also something quite lovely that this is happening online in a digital way where whoever people can watch the work and see someone maybe from their country and and also at the same time see a story from somewhere else that's through theater not through the news not through media not through that political lens so it's quite i think a really beautiful way to reflect on something that you know the world was going through but through this very kind of specific uh context um thomas did you want to add anything about the stories that were coming up for you or that were part of ended up being part of european family yes uh, that was so uh, important and that was so interesting as, as richard said uh, in the lockdown there was uh, uh, families um, break down uh, from each other and there was another way in the, in this story because uh, there are some situation when uh, some piece uh, some 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 part of the family a boy the children who didn't want to go home and it, it was it was a good chance to say sorry there is a lockdown i couldn't go home sorry mm -hmm. i have to stay here yeah. and that was another interesting way and uh, that that was a, a, a good chance to to uh, make some secret in the story mm -hmm. which is uh, came up during the story at the at the last part of the of the movie of the show so there there are some uh, secrets which is which is uh, many thematic of the story yes uh, there are uh, refugees in, in 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 the camp who 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 who, who had to stay on that place because there are the virus is uh, uh lock, locked down all the all the people the 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 the, the, the refugees too and there are some social worker who who have had to go to help them had to go to care them mm. during the virus uh, uh, and they they had to take their their job uh, harder than in normal way sure. in this situation and there was a secret in in this story in, in that family uh, that there was a guy who who is is who is a gay who have a who who have a boyfriend and and this this is the the big secret which is mm -hmm. uh, came up uh, mm -hmm. in the in the story in, in in the in the out and this idea of grief or of stories of secrets um is quite uh, i think in, you know, an international, we all have, you know, a secret, we all have grief, we all have something that's very private. Um, and so it's, it's lovely that you, you know, the, the work was kind of looking at that and how to share that, because I think it's, you know, that's one of the, the beauties of, of art and that we can create a space to look at maybe some things that might be taboo or difficult to talk about. 
And so do you have any feedback of how maybe people who watch the work um, or even amongst, you know, you, the, the actors in the group, how it was like to deal with these topics around grief and secrets and to make sure that you present it in a way that's respectful, but still true to that, you know, to the story? Was, was that something that came up for you guys? What it was for me, I mean, for me, as a writer of of my own community, as a writer of, about my community, mm -hmm. then I feel a responsibility that I don't feel if I write about something else. Mm -hmm. So there is a responsibility because you know, because of the space we exist in, mm -hmm. in terms of racism and, and, and all of the other things and lack of opportunities and, and so on and so forth for, for Romani people around the world. We know that we're not in a, a you know a very strong position, so we have to be really really careful as a writer that we take that responsibility. We don't want to do anything that's actually going to cause more damage, but on the other hand, we don't want to do something that's all sweetness and light and pretend that there aren't that we're not real people. Yes. So that that is a very fine balance which we're always considering all the time. So there is a responsibility and a very fine balance. And we thought about that and we talked about that. And I think we did, we did pretty well with that. Mm -hmm. One of the things we also wanted to reflect was the, the European family, you know, the stories that are in this, this, this play, this film, whatever you want to call it, are universal. Uh, as you said, you know, families have this. And I think the particular character that Thomas played, he's away from home he's living somewhere else now when you come from a particular community whatever that is there is a certain freedom when you move away <laughs> and people can't see what you do so even if you're having zoom calls and you're writing letters as people used to do or phone calls it's yeah, yeah i'm fine of course i'm still you know so of course i'm still practicing <laughs> the community things and, and of course i'm still going to church mother and of course i'm still doing this whatever community it is but what happened, I think, with the lockdown was that for some people that actually gave them more freedom because they didn't have to interact. They didn't have to travel from wherever they'd gone to to come back home. Mm -hmm. They could just keep this facade going um, via the Internet. But then, of course, like everything else, most secrets in families come out. And when they do come out, you know, it causes shockwaves. So... Um, and then, and then, of course, in most families, as we find, there's a big secret, but actually, it's not a secret to everybody. It's you know, <laughs> people go, you know, we are new. Oh yeah, I knew about that. And they're like, yeah. what? Am I the only? You know, so it, it, they're universal themes. Mm. But we wanted to make sure that it um, it reflected. And then, in terms of feedback, there were lots of people I've spoken to since who said everything from oh man this is just like the best soap opera ever for <laughs> us you know when's the next one mm -hmm. you know they wanted to see this family carry on they 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 actually had invested in it and then of course there are some people from the community saying well well he wouldn't wear that shirt <laughs> you, know? <laughs> so, you know so but but overall um enjoyed it. people enjoyed it um, and I and I think they valued it. Um, so yeah, so I was I was very very pleased with the feedback I had. Mm. And Thomas, yes, uh, yes, uh, as the same many of the person who looked this uh, video, they asked, okay, when, when is the next? When is the next step of this family? Because mm. they. Uh, started to love this uh, family and these stories so it is so nice to thinking on and get, get this uh, feedback so it, 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 it was a lo lovely family and, and and then another way uh, mm -hmm. I get some feedback from this how symbolic this story mm -hmm. uh, because the the uh, the, the center of the family, the father and the mother is in Britain or some, somewhere in, in Europe, you know, because uh, there was not uh, concrete in the story, but where. But uh, many of them uh, 
thinking, okay, they are in Britain. And the others from the family go across in Europe, in other uh, countries in Europe. Uh, and they they broken they they c c couldn't uh, get in in, uh, in 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 conversation as as as, as the family that, that was the sad way of the story and uh, the happiest way in the story how they fight against the the uh, far how they fight against the problems and how they get the contact together mm -hmm. and it was the symbolic of the Rom Romani people because uh, if we are think us as a, as a, as a, as a, as a big family there are no um, orders there are no far we can we can uh, fight against the far uh, we can we can uh, uh, get in touch uh, across the internet we, we can get to work together uh, we, 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 if we are one we can do this so that was the the message for for many many people as, uh, you guys did that you know you did that and and what a beautiful you know and you i'm assuming you all must feel very proud that people want to know more that they f were so invested in the work and that you could do that through this theater film play you know that was online and so that's also you know it's i i know it's not easy to communicate feelings and to really engage people through this medium and so the fact that you guys could through the acting through the editing through the the stories you know it's it's a you know i, I would i'm assuming you should be very proud and happy that you were able to do that um and also, you know, it's it's not easy. I think some of, as you said, Richard, some of the topics you're talking about, and it's a fine line. And um, and so I, thinking about that, is there um, something that you want the audience to know about the work after seeing it? Is there a kind of key message? I think Thomas, you started to talk about that. That if you want to do something, you we can do it and that that's something true to the Romani community. Is there anything else um, that you'd like to, you hope the audience walks away with after seeing this work? I mean, for, for me, I, I would just, I would just like anybody to enjoy it. First yeah. of all, you know, yeah. just, just enjoy it. it. That's, that's what it's about. It's stories are there to be enjoyed. They're there to move us. They're there to remind us um, about ourselves. Um, you know, if it if it if it makes somebody think and, and act slightly differently, maybe a bit more positively or something, it, it, or provides a bit of comfort to their family, that would be great. I think the other thing professionally, I would like it to do is to say, look, this was done during lockdown in our front rooms with our families. We had to keep our families out of the way and the dogs out of the way, and you know all this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so we had to make this little tunnel in our in our front rooms or wherever we were. You know, in my caravan sometimes trying to get that peace and quiet, and then the internet's not working properly because everybody's on the internet. Um, so you know, we we did it we did it in real life, and we and 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 I think you know we I want people to see that we tried our best you know and and we can write and we can produce things and this is probably a starting point we can get better but we've got to start somewhere and i'd say to anybody whatever community you're from you know don't be put off by hollywood blockbusters and people telling you, you can't do just tell your stories you've got to start somewhere and someone somewhere will like it and then some more people might like it and then you get better and you know so that is for me is we, we've got to start somewhere you've got to start to create Romani um, you know the, the, this Romani stories and, and the independent theatre company in Hungary just since they did the Roma heroes in 2017 yes. just worked tirelessly non-stop made an impact around the world and people are watching this around the world now and that, that gives me so much pleasure I can't tell you 
Yes, and I think, you know, that's such a, I, that came through to me in watching the work that it's about, you know, I could see values, what, you know, that there were decisions that were made and it was, there was something about holding on to some values, whether those were personal or made through the team, there was something quite beautiful about, you know, this is, as a unit, we want to share this work in this way, these stories, even though we're in different places. Um, and so my last question is, where did the title come from, European Family? Was that just, did that organically come up or was that proposed by someone? Um, okay. <laughs> Richard's laughing. <laughs> I, am, I am laughing because I had a title in mind. <laughs> so it, it somehow got lost in translation. It got lost in internet. It got lost in... Um, so um, it, it somehow got confused. I was going to call it Woke. Um, mainly because it was a play on, on the word wake, which is, you know, when somebody dies, we have this. And, and a lot of people... Uh, you know, use the word differently. So for us in our community, in England particularly, this thing is called wake because you sit all night with the deceased. You don't leave them on their own. You stay awake with them all night and you tell stories about them and you stay there all through the night until they're buried, um, whether it's the next day or the day after. So you sit up, you stay awake. And of course the word woke, very important that, you know, the father in this play gets a little bit more woke. Um, so, but it, uh, somehow that got lost. <laughs> it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds really, really good. Um, but it somehow got lost in the email, I think. And um, so I don't know who it was who just said European family. Um, but yeah, we are, you know, we're a European family. We're a European family of artists. Yeah. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So we'll, we'll save the woke one for another time. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, and you know, that's a, a, a play on words there. Now it's used all the time and, and so, so it would have been interesting to see if that was the title, what that would have, how that would have evolved. Um, but there's something also quite lovely about European family. Um, and I, I, you know, I think it's also quite fitting. So, you know, maybe the next play, Richard, or book might use woke. <laughs> yes. Is yeah. there anything else? Yes, Thomas, did you want to say something? Yes, uh, that, that was the work title of the story, as, as Richard said, the book, and that, that was another title. Uh, during we are thinking on the titles of the, of the story of this uh, play, that was the Euro European Roma family. And at the last editing, um, we are talking about uh, this because Okay, this is a story about uh, Ro Roma family, but all the stories, uh, all the humanic uh, stories and the heart in this story can be universal, not just for Ro Roma people. It's enough to, uh, to, to, to know they are uh, Ro Roma, Roma family. Uh, but in the title, it's uh, it, 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 it's enough, as we say, European family. Because if we are thinking in Europe as a big family, and if uh, our countries wanted to to get get in, uh, work together and uh, share the values in, in in Europe and share everything. The, 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 uh, sharing the culture in Europe, we 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 we, we must to think uh, in this big uh, uh, place to to as a as a uni union. Yeah. Yes, and you know, there's there's that point about kind of the human that the human is at the core of this you know and and the stories are all kind of i think that's what makes them universal and you guys did that so well that while there were cultural elements in there and cultural and and you know also kind of country <laughs> uh, those elements specific to various characters um there's also but at the core i think it's about the human and and that 
human spirit and I feel that's perhaps um, what comes through the most why you know people really were able to find something in it um, as both of you have said and it's also at the time of lockdown you know the world was kind of coming together in a number of ways and not coming together as well and I you know I think that that's came in a bit with the story as well so it feels quite um reflecting the times but also a hope for the future of you know let's let's look at the human and, and let's see you know that that core of the person is really what what matters not the labels or the secrets or you know but it's yeah. it's about the person um well, thank you so much both for for sitting down and sharing your your memories about creating the work, the the title, um, acting in the in the work, and and yes, and just making this work that is accessible and inclusive and so important and and timely. So thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.